Um, so um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, I believe we need to stay in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yolanda? Yes, I'm here. Roberto? Here. Bobby? Uh, Colin? Yep. Uh, Marta? Here. And myself, Gail, I'm here. Um, I thought Julio said he was coming. Yes, so he maybe is. he'll be here a little bit. Really I know that Joe can't come and Gabriel's not coming. And Poncho, do we know if he's coming? You didn't let anybody know. No, he didn't. Okay. He's fine. So maybe then just Julio will show up. Okay. So do we have any citizen comments today? You know, um, Renee is here to speak on uh, item number 272. Two. So we'll introduce her then. Okay. Texas Commission for the Arts Culture District. Okay, okay. that's fine. So then um, can we have the minutes for last month's meeting? Those are the okay. Um, shall we read the minutes, or is there a motion to approve them as, uh, would you all like to read through the minutes? Just a minute. the minutes is there a second? My second. All right. That then, um, Martha made a motion to approve the minutes as they are, and Bobby seconded that. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. So that's passed. Thank you very much. Um, staff report: status on artist contracts for mural arts grants program. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Rocha has already picked up his check for 50% of, of uh, the, the amount that he needs to receive. Mr. Martinez, Mauro Martinez, has picked up the contract, but the, it has to be sent to the corporate office. If you recall, his is going to be at the outlet mall. Oh, so no. we're okay. still waiting on okay. that. Okay. Unfortunately, Mr. Castro, Carlos Castro, uh -huh. Uh, the building that he was supposed to do the mural on got sold. Oh, okay. Uh, and I, yes, it got <laughs> sold. And so, uh, city attorney said if the new owner was okay with with it being put on there, you know, we could just change the name on the contract. Unfortunately, he did not want to. Oh, so, um, okay. and okay. it's not going to happen. It's a, right. <laughs> Which building was that? I'm sorry. Uh, Hi, on Lincoln Street. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Downtown yeah. Bill yeah. with the overpass going to L L C L C C. No, it's still there. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's in the it's twelve ten Lincoln Street. And it's a picture of the building, but he didn't uh, the new owner didn't want anything but his own business signage okay. on it. So yeah. unfortunately okay. I mean uh, since city council mm -hmm. voted for that particular building, building and right. like, you would probably have to resubmit a proposal. And yeah. that's what and uh, city attorney said since the deadline has already passed, right. it'll be next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well sad. No, that is sad. Okay, and um, okay, so you still have more stuff. Mm -hmm. No, that that was the only the um, only item on the staff report. Oh, okay, I'm reading less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the last time. Okay, so yes, I had thought of that idea um, because of comments made that Martha and I had read about what exactly our role, role and mission is um, according to the city council 
I know we do. We were trying to come up with our mission and our objectives in the very beginning. And they actually have kind of a written statement about what our mission is in the mural arts. Um, the, the, uh, the ordinance that got passed where they established? Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the mission that, that was given to us by the city, does it, is it just for the murals or is it just in general for us? Or, because I know we had worked on our on our own mission, mm -hmm. and we never I don't and we never finalized it. And, yeah. we, and, and I proposed some objectives as well, and I have them here, but we never. Have. Okay, so I actually have we we wrote down what our vision and mission right were. Okay, and I actually have those right here. Good. Good. <laughs> so what we had I guess we voted and accepted these. Yes. Okay. So what we said our vision was, was to enhance the arts and cultural experience in our community and promote the value and significance of the visual performing and literary arts to its citizens. And our mission was increase citizens access to the arts and culture by providing leadership, advocacy, and support for art that enriches the cultural vitality of this community. Right. In the goals and policies of the Viva Laredo plan, um, I believe these were accepted by the city. I could be wrong on that, but I know they were put into writing and they were given to me by several people because um, it was important that this was what was being introduced as part of the Viva Laredo plan, which I believe Laredo was accepting as their updating their comprehensive plan. Com Excuse comprehensive me. plan. Okay. So I have one more copy of this if you all want to pass it around. Um, so I'm just going to, can I just read through this? Sure. Because it, I think it's important that this is what was presented to the city as part of their adopting a comprehensive plan. So it says the overall goal is established by ordinance a department for education, art, and culture to include an education liaison and an arts and culture liaison as well as a commission of arts and culture with close integration with the Department of Economic Development. Um, I won't go into the education uh, goals there. I'll, I'll read the arts and culture goals that were set out. So goal, I guess 10.2, recognize local and regional arts and culture as the foremost indicator of the community's unique identity and support its development to cultivate civic pride and identity and as an essential component to economic development and for attracting and retaining talent. Okay, that's a lot of words. Um, and basically what it's saying is what we're trying to do, recognize local and regional arts and culture, which would give our community of Laredo a unique identity. And like it says, support development and cultural civic pride and an essential component to economic development. And what they're saying is tourism and maybe bringing in tourists, which was always, it's part of that. Yeah, um, um, okay, so then the policy that's the, the goal. So policy 10.2.1, establish a commission on arts and culture. The commission would help realize the goals of the public arts plan, which I don't know that we have a public arts plan, but maybe there's one somewhere. <laughs> I, don't think, that, no. I don't think it does. So far, have we yet. don't have one. Okay, so, but that's, that's what they're saying is part of our goal. Uh, also create a public art ordinance to establish a 2% for the arts program, setting aside 2% from every capital improvement project budget for the acquisition of, of art for municipal property. Now this I know has not gone into effect at all. No, it has to be an ordinance. Right. Right. It so it's an ordinance, but that has not happened. Mm -hmm. But it was pointed out to me that that's supposed to be something that would happen in the future. Right. So we would have an additional 2% for the arts program set aside for every capital improvement project budget for to, 
to acquire art for municipal profit. It also says promote higher education in the arts, support creative and professional growth of the arts community, support economic growth of heritage tourism by investing in the historic streets of Laredo and in historic architecture, enhance the experience visitors have of Laredo by investing in wayfinding, signage and apps, and support the creation of a tourism bus trolley route, promote Laredo as a unique place, community, and destination. So these seem to be the goals that they have in mind for our group that were not really outlined at all for us. Let me just <coughs> But they haven't been adopted, I don't believe, by the city yet. Okay. But so that, this is just that, a plan. That is the, the, the way I'm, I see it, the way I'm reading it, is that within the scope of what they presented as a fine arts and cultural mm -hmm. um, plan they have or vision, uh -huh. we are part of that. Right. We are the, uh, the commission is not this is we're part of that right and I think that as a commission we can have our own mission and what we did I think also, right. because what it does it just supports what the city <coughs> is trying to do so I don't think the city because I think there this is in its infancy yes it, it's just you know we're just we're just starting it and right. so I don't think the city has a plan right now or a fully developed plan right. and I think that um, we're just starting it but I think it is good of us to have our own mission and mm -hmm. to have our own vision and then maybe mm -hmm. what we can do is um, and I and what I did I researched several uh, commissions all over Texas and even in California and came up came up with a couple of objectives because that would even um, fine-tune it even more, you know, mm -hmm. it becomes very specific. Right. Uh, and we could add that once maybe we have a, that would be our plan, mm -hmm. or, you know, what, what would guide us. Right. And I think that once we have that, we could present it to city council and have them say yay or nay. And then say, okay, now what is, what is the council's mm -hmm. vision of what we're supposed to be doing? We already have something. If they approve it, then maybe they would want for us to, because what happened, Gail, and you know that, you know, we can't control what the city does, right. you know, we're, we're, we're just Absolutely. advisors mm -hmm. here. But if it's going to get to a point where uh, they go around us, and then so we lose either our validity or our credibility, and so, right. I think that once, if we present something like this, that we say, hey, you know, we mean business, we're serious about this commission, and, you know, we would like to say, you know, we're all for it. Right. But we need to get guidance from you. What do you want us to do? Right, and also because they did um, task us with the mural arts program. Mm -hmm. um, not that we have to have a say in everything, but right. if that was our task as a commission, then I would think then anything, anybody who went to them on a personal level and they approved murals, that should also, we should have known or we should be informed or we maybe, maybe, I don't know, I mean they can say yes to anything, but do we feel like we need to have some say in that? Or, I don't know. Well, I keep thinking about like the third party funding and I wish we had legal here so we could act, because it, it's the same thing. You know, the third party, they're tasked and, and nobody is allowed to go beyond the, 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 mm -hmm. the board and go straight and say, and go to one of the council members. Right. That's illegal, they can't do right. that and yet they do it. But this is what I mean, maybe, but we need is clearance, you know. That's what, I, that's what I was requesting, what was that, two meetings ago when we didn't have a quorum, we just had a discussion. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was hoping to get, some kind of um, clear idea of, of what that means when they do that, and how does that affect us, and are we supposed to be part of that, and I don't know, um, you know. Well, there, there needs to be then a, re, uh, uh, you know, a need for us to be able to 
either in written form or some other form to be able to advise those who want to have specific you know, uh, guidance. Guidance as yes. to mm -hmm. what yes. happens. And, and that was and what I had requested. So that we won't have to assume that. that we have been overpassed because of the fact right. that somebody. Exactly. exactly. So we need something, we need to either write it down or. And who was going to do the draft? I'm, I'm sorry, I was not here in the last. A Joe. Mm -hmm. Joe, okay. <laughs> Joe was so, there. So. <coughs> I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, but actually, these these goals and policies, they are in the plan that was submitted to the city by that Viva Laredo um, group for the city to adopt as their comprehensive, comprehensive plan. plan because they need to upgrade the one they have, renew it, right, um, right. anyway. This is included in what was submitted to the city. That's why I was given this by, I printed it off the, um, the plan. That's, um, yeah, I printed so it off the plan. But that, <laughs> that's what it is, it's a plan. Mm -hmm. It's a plan. Ordinances yet. No. Right. No, but if they adopt the whole plan right, per se, right, then right. that's when they start making those ordinances. Good. So this is part of that plan. Okay. Okay, so it's good to know because um, it does give a lot more guidance mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. which I think is great. Did I read the other part? Mm -hmm. There's another page. There's oh, that. sorry. There's more. Oh, sorry. There's more. <laughs> Make arts and culture the cornerstone of Loretta's identity by encouraging and growing our cultural, arts-based film and art festivals, theater, and other artistic projects. Promote children's art programs. Promote the creation of an art incubator studio, exhibition, performance, and office space for arts organizations, artists, and creative industry businesses. Create a standard policy for selection of artists for public art through RFQs. What is an RFQ? The request proposal. Mm -hmm. Okay and pay competitions to encourage the development of the industry and to help the recruitment of more artists and local. So this is a lot of really good stuff. It is, that very was, comprehensive. That was implemented by all the people who were going to those planned yeah, meeting meetings and, meeting. and stuff and all the ideas that they gathered from all of that. And so I think it's really great and, and especially the part where we would get a little more funding, like 2% of the Improvement so, so that's always good because what they allocated for the mural arts program is strictly for mural, mural, murals. Okay, okay. that doesn't mean they couldn't allocate more funding for other things that we could come up with. Like we had talked from the very beginning about music festivals, uh, dance things. Uh, uh, we want, and it it encompasses what arts and culture is to Laredo. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we encouraged, like the council members who did had not um, submitted names for this group, to we were helping give names to get uh, musicians and and other people involved because art is not just you know painting and sculpture. I mean, art is everything. So thank you. For it's that. theater. <laughs> it's, it's music. It's yeah, theater. It's it writing. It's, it's literature. It's, it's, it's literature. literature. Sure, it's everything. So, so uh, I mean, we we have a really great group here. I think that goes across the board and and really understands in every way, in every department, in every aspect of what arts means and mm -hmm. culture. There's room for growth. Sure. A lot yeah. of room for growth. Um, so yeah, uh, I think this is great, and maybe we can get copies of this. Mm -hmm. I, I marked mine, but you can make. Maybe we could get copies of this just so everybody could have this because I believe eventually, unless they eliminate things, uh, this would be adopted hopefully by the city. So it has been, and I mean it's it's goals for right. the arts goals program. exactly. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also good, even though if they haven't adopted it yet, to keep these things in mind when we consider oh, yeah. what we would like to propose. And the other thing, what about? What if we were going to the, I don't even know if we can, but what if we reached out to individual members of the city council to request use of their discretionary funds for projects? I mean, if an individual citizen can do it, shouldn't we uh, be able to do it? And 
It does say you make recommendations to okay. city council. So, so if you find a worthwhile project. So yeah, that that to me sounds like a well, really maybe good idea. one project that could reach across all the boundaries, so we don't go to just one council member and say, you know, we're doing this in your area. If it's something that let's say we were planning up, we're thinking of having a some kind of an arts festival right. or something that would be of interest to everybody. Mm -hmm. And so then we could target all the, all the council members and request. I'm very good at requesting funding. Okay, mm -hmm. and so good. <laughs> uh, well, I'm <laughs> um, the, the part that I, I just read right now that kind of stuck out to me is, where is it? Oh, paid competitions. See, I'm really into that because Artists are starving. Come on. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, if there was a competition, I mean, there's music competitions, there's mm -hmm. painting competitions, there's mural competitions, there's sidewalk drawing competitions, there's all kinds of competitions that we could feasibly say, and I had already thought about this before, and that's why it stuck out in my head. Like, what if we said, we open a competition to people to paint murals or let's let's change it up to um, I don't know uh, have a they have chalk drawing competitions you know they're not permanent but they're amazing and or whatever competition it is um, that there would be three prizes you know like the first prize would be five thousand dollars the second prize would be to, uh, 3,000 and third prize could be 2,000 or something like that. And maybe honorable mention 1,000. So what are we looking at? Five, three, eight, nine, 10, 11, a ten, let's say $10,000. If that's nothing from a few council members to give of their discretionary funds, it's really nothing. We could even say, let's ask for 15,000 and have that competition and you just put out a call to artists and you publicize it. And I would say they don't have to be all local. I would say they could come from surrounding areas, um, maybe Mexico and Texas, I don't know. But that could put Laredo, start putting Laredo on the map for arts, um, things happening in our community. And if we did a mural competition like that, um, you would generate people coming in who would work here and stuff like that. I mean, if we did a music competition or encompassing a few different um, parts of what we consider arts and culture, some kind of competition and say you have three different areas, music, uh, um, poetry, and art or something, I don't know. What if we had a combined festival. What if we came up with ideas that the city could fund, maybe through discretionary funds, and work on things like that? So, I don't know if I'm getting off track here, but no, yeah, no. Um, so, so these are things that I think we really need to start thinking about very seriously and come up with ideas amongst ourselves and then present to the city council because I have no idea if we're ever going to get any more funding until next year. The only thing they funded was that mural mm -hmm. arts competition, that mural competition, and what are we going to do for the rest of the year? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. so that was something that we were commissioned to mm -hmm. do uh, specifically. So now I do believe we need to come up with really good ideas that we can present to them and ask for funding from the individual council members who have fifty thousand yeah. dollars? No, uh, no, five hundred. Five hundred thousand dollars. And seventy dollars something thousand a year. A year. Imagine. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> so major competitions coming. Okay. So, so I'm not saying they're going to give us any of their money, but but if 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 we are part. We're the people they they put but, on this but you know, Gail, commission. They will. It's all in how we present. And since yeah. they probably don't have any I other ideas, that's not their job. It's given yeah. to us to be our job. So I say we start, you know, brainstorming and and. But I think we're putting the cart before the horse. What we need to do first is, is, is get that letter and get it out. Yes. Let them 
guide us and tell us yes. exactly what it is that yep. they expect from us. Okay. Yep. Once we clear that, uh, then we say, okay, these th we need to let them know that we have a mission. But actually, don't we have guidance from them already? We have something. It, it's on the the ordinance. It yes. says what your duties. But are. no. But I'm saying as far as as what they tasked us to do, and then allowing somebody else to go around us. Uh, to get something approved. I, I think we need clarification there. Oh, I agree on that, definitely. But we do have, we do have. Yes, they, yeah, yeah, we do. Because they had What they want something. us, what mm -hmm. they envisioned for us somewhere. I have it in all of these papers, but I'll look for it. Um, well, that same topic, I don't know how many of you remember in the 70s and very early 80s that the group from Laredo um, argued used to do a competition that took place at the San Agustin Plaza. Uh -huh. And we used to get people from all over Texas. Okay, so this Brown, is what I have in mind. Right, all over Texas, San Antonio, Brownsville, yes. even Dallas, there were people coming. Right. The only thing was at that time, the only prizes that we were given, I think it was like about $200 for a yeah. prize, and it was $100 for a prize. It was the 70s. No, I'm just kidding. That's not a big so, incentive. And the, well, and in the 70s, it was a lot of money. And also at that time, there was a depreciation of the Right, the thing. pencil. And the, what they found out, what the artists found out, was that they, it was very hard to be able to win. They got mad at, at us because a couple of times my students won and, <laughs> and you know it was rigged. It was one of those things they thought it was rigged right. something like that. so they stopped coming and all of a sudden it was it was gone but it is something that of course needs to be advertised and at that time it used to be advertised through the Laredo art it used to be advertised throughout texas so it is it, the advertising is another thing that will require something. okay but there's there there is free advertising for call to artists on many of the Texas okay. arts websites. Then it's free if you're making call to artists. Hmm. There's no fee. They'll put your information in there. Right. So right. Another thing I was thinking, since I have you in front of me, there could be a competition, for example, at the same time that, that competition is taking over, let's say, for example, that we have a competition at the World Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the second floor, there could be a possibility of having, for example, a piano contest, mm -hmm. or, right. or, a, or a, a, you know, a, a or an organ festival. Sorry, or, we yeah. just have, yeah. happen to have yeah. one of those. Right. <laughs> right. one of those yeah. things, so, you know, at the same time. Well, it, I, I, yeah. don't, I don't Absolutely. think it just has to be um, in downtown Laredo because, like, yeah. like you say, you have an yeah. organ out there, so we could we could uh, ask different parts of the community to be involved mm -hmm. so, no, so like, a city yes a citywide thing the definitely. one thing about it is that imagine if, if i put my foot in my mouth um, of the performing arts people go to see performing arts more than they go see visual arts true mm -hmm. the yeah. number of people that attend true. is different so that is one of the reasons for trying to combine so that at least oh you so get you get them all in one building i see what you're saying that everybody begins to see or in one area the different maybe things so that are I, yeah. I can see that that does yeah. make sense or it, have them in one area right and that, that would help to be mm -hmm. able to, to create that you know, right everybody concentrating yeah. in one place I think, yeah, it doesn't yeah. have to be in the lower center for the No, I know, but that's that's a great space, and mm -hmm. they do have the upstairs part, so there's like, yeah. you could have two different things going on, and then maybe other things around the area, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, you wanted know, to have, have the shop art, then you could also right. have it right there in the, right. in the premises. So right. So you know, I think, people. you know, we mm -hmm. those are the kind of things I really feel that we need to <clears> start thinking, put our heads together and come up with, and and um, get get ideas that we can present then to the individual council members or to the whole council. Actually, uh, they just passed an item where they would like all commissions, committees, and boards to present once a year. Once a year only? Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, that, that's a, that doesn't mean they're But no, this is like that. <laughs> required now. Oh, okay. that's required. Mm. You okay. can go and oh, okay. <laughs> you can go anytime. <laughs> you can go more. We can yeah. compound them every. every but required. I suppose just give them a status of what, what the the well, commission okay. is doing. Well, okay. I see. Yeah, that's. No, I that's could volunteer good. you to be one of the first. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. I mean, I think that's great. 
that we have mm -hmm. to make a presentation mm -hmm. to them because w they need to know we're working mm -hmm. and that we're okay. interested. So, so yeah. I think I'm taking up all the time, and I know she has a presentation to make. So, I, what do you all think about this? Should we just fix our, <coughs> our? Let me let me pull out what they said our mission was or whatever. Mm -hmm. I know we have it. Yeah. And then. Um, Based on what you're saying and based on that and what we already wrote down, maybe our next meeting we can say, okay, let's brainstorm on this and come up with a, a finite, you know, thing. Um, so the draft letter, the yeah, the draft letter is also something we, we mm -hmm. want to have. So I think we need clarification. On yes, that. we do need yeah. clarification on that. Yeah, with, the, with the mission and all the other documentation, could we perhaps circulate that before the meeting so that we can all just have a look and yes. sort of yes. come prepared? I, I have it um, here. You probably have it. I know I have it. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the the one set that it were voted on, they're on, um, in, the, in the minutes from the previous. Yeah, uh, okay. I printed mm -hmm. mine, but it didn't print the whole thing. Okay. I don't know where it is. Okay, so yes, we'll get that out to everybody mm -hmm. so that we can look mm -hmm. over what we're going to be discussing. That's a good idea. And this too, I think we should mm -hmm. keep this. I can scan that and send it Here, you can, to everybody. You can have this. I, I have a Oh, you do. Yes, okay, I do. perfect. Um, <coughs> I can scan that, scan the, the mission and vision, send that along, and also uh, the ordinance where it actually says yes. ordinance. Yes. 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 Okay. I can do that. Because there is an ordinance there. Okay. Can I give you all a, a, a sample of the objective? Uh, sure. And then you can, we can bring it up as something for next meeting. Sure. Mm -hmm. But just so that you have something to look at. You make copies for everybody or so Education training. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so then this will be a part of what we're going to discuss mm -hmm. next time. Okay. Right. Okay, so that's our homework. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so are we good with this? Do you have anything? Anybody yeah. else have anything to I say? I was looking at the mission and the visions, uh, and basically the only thing that we need on those is some specifics as to, you know, because they're very general. Yeah. And we need mm -hmm. to maybe. Do that's some. where the objectives come in. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because be vision it, it, it has to be small, you just yeah, have to concise, yeah, right, it concise, and you just have to hit the, what it is. Now, the mission is a little bit more, but the objective is the one that's special, yeah, that right. right? Yeah, that was the only thing that I thought that needed. Okay, so are we good with this? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So, now Texas Commission for the Arts Cultural District Designation Program. Okay. okay, and well, I have Renee here because she used to work with the planning and zoning, and something has been done as far as designating uh, a zone for okay. arts and education. And she's just going to show you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's local. That's not this. That's yes. This is not the cultural mm -hmm. district that you're going to present. Well, no. Let me get started because okay. it's going to be a little confusing. Okay. okay. All right. Back in 2009, I was working with the planning and zoning department. Right. Um, there was a. Uh, interest, if you will, in creating an arts, what we call arts and entertainment district. Uh, the members of the committee, and I'm not exactly sure who called the committee together, but we had, and I suspect it was council member Cynthia yeah, Lando Espinosa, um, Senator Rocha Taylor from Main Street was on it, Ronnie Acosta with Community Development was on it, Gabriel Castillo was on it, um, Center for the Arts, Viviana Frank, Frank and Frank Architecture, myself, and Margarita Araiza with the Planned Parenthood Foundation. Okay, we were tasked with looking at the creation of an arts, entertainment, arts, and culture district. Now, there was some, I think, uncertainty about what that actually entailed. Like, is it, what, how do we make it legal? Do we just, like, get a boundary settled? And what wound up happening with it was a zoning district was created. Not an overlay, not, not something that was an overlay, but an actual zoning district. So we have um, a zoning ordinance that is in the um, Land Development Code Book. And the good news is, I think it's good news, I wrote the ordinance, so I'm pretty she's good. Like, I mean, she's also a library. She's yeah, a library. Yeah, she's a librarian. Yes, I'm a librarian. Yeah, with, with <laughs> readers. Um, and I'm going to try to... Well, 
<laughs> close something up for you. Anyway, so there, we started meeting in 09. I thought, no, you're good. Yeah. By the spring of 2010, we were ending with something a little more solid. And by, let me say, October, well, July, we created the district. And then by October, we had to do some rezoning. Okay. Quick and dirty on rezoning, a zoning district allows for certain types of uses. You have residential, you have commercial. Mm -hmm. um, the CBD, Central Business District, actually most of the uses that were allowed in the CBD came to be used for the Arts and Entertainment District. Um, I think that was one of the confusion uh, or confusing aspe aspects because it seemed that people did not, at least on the committee and I think in general, did not understand that uses like uh, residential below, um, I'm sorry, commercial below, residential on top, um, art, you know, galleries, all of those things, they were already allowed in the CBD. Mm -hmm. So that could have gone one way. But the call was for getting it changed to an actual designated arts and entertainment zoning district. And uh, then we added two or three things. One I remember was brew, brew pubs. <laughs> We don't have any yet, but they're allowed. Um, and so what we did when we created the district, of course, we had to designate geographic boundaries. Now, two things. What I'm going to tell you right now is the proposed boundaries that have been designated, but they not all the area has been rezoned. So the area I'm going to talk about right this moment is the area in which anybody wants, if they wish to rezone their property to A&E, they may. Um, and then I'll show you what's actually been rezoned. The city's rezoned. I'm not aware that anybody's come in with a request to rezone their property, but I haven't been with the um, planning department since uh, the end, well, beginning of 2015. Okay, so the way the ordinance describes it with the Arts and Entertainment District, only properties located with the area bounded on the north by Scott Street. And so we were having Scott Street. Um, Zacate Creek is over here on the east, and the River Grande River on the south and west. So all that. That's a big, pretty good size. Okay, and a lot of um, options. Now, the minimum, well, what has been designated so far that we rezoned, I want to say in October 2010, basically is um, Matamoros, well, figure, and I can't remember, I don't think it's San Bernardo, I think it was Santa um, Ursula, and then across on Matamoros till um, Flores, down Flores, and I believe to this part of Santa Ursula as well. There's little designation in here, which does include um, both the locally designated San Agustin Historical District and El Mercado Historical District. Um, the intent was very much what you're being tasked with. Um, arts and entertainment, arts and cultural, culture um, uses in that area. Oh, and one other comment. When, at least the way the ordinance is currently written, if a property owner does want to have a rezone, they're going to need to get everybody on the block, all the landowners, to agree. Because according to that ordinance, you have to bring the whole block in. A little bit strange, though, because on Florida Street, the city didn't, didn't designate the rest of the block from Florida West. All, all it was done was make sure that the west side of Florida got designated so you'd have all of Florida's in and not, excuse me, not chopped apart. Is Main Street there, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of St. Peter. They're outside. That historic district exists in a locally designated historical district, but it is not included because mm -hmm. all we did was go over to Flores. We oh. didn't go on the other side. We didn't even get to Santa Maria. Didn't even get to Comet. Um, so that's what was designated. A lot of talk had been made of wouldn't it be nice if we could work with traffic and have some different one way street patterns, block. Um, traffic off or say like a like McAllen has an art walk well actually we've actually come a far way we have a lot of um, our first Friday uh, activity um, so that's the background so far of what 
you're doing. So in some ways, you're not, I don't want to say you're reinventing the wheel, but I just felt it really important that you understand that a lot had already been created. Then I was looking at the application for um, commission. Right. Um, because my first, when I was reading the front page, I'm like, OK, they're talking about cultural district. They are talking about a geographical district. So if you, well, if we were, say, say we wanted to just go ahead and get all of that rezoned to, to AE, we do have to look at the underlying zonings because some of the uses are not compatible, but if you rezoned, they would be, which also means that some of the uses in some of the districts are already allowable, and you wouldn't really need to, to change the zoning. So for example, this is where the railroads are. This is an M1 zoning district, in light industrial. Almost all of the uses that you could think of are allowed in that district. Um, from big time, even like um, foundry kinds of things to you know, any kind of an artist studio. Um, I, the thing I'm not sure, but we probably have to go look at would be dwelling units. Um, then you've got these, mall, this, um, yeah, I'm not remembering it. They're the comprehensive R3 zone. And so usually a mixture of, of house types. Those you would probably want to rezone because they don't have the commercial component to them, nor the um, other artistic component. This is um, R2. It's multifamily. I think a lot of the uses, but I'm not sure all of them. And then these pink ones are, are um, commercial and uh, B1, light commercial. and. I forget what this other one is, but something similar. Or, that would be acceptable. There, most of those uses are already allowed in, in those areas. And I think even the kinds of residential that you would be looking for um, would be allowed. Then actually the CBD, which is the part around where we've rezoned, all of that has and has had the zoning uses that you would want to find in an arts and, arts and cultural district. Um, trying to think, oh, B1. Ah, that's what the deal is. This is probably a B1 and this is B2. So yeah, you would not have any issues there. Um, trying to think if there's anything else crucial to mention. I guess going back to the application, um, it would be, I thinking the committee, as in your commission, um, looking and determining if you wanted to try to or bring somebody in from planning uh, to see, OK, what do we want to do? Do we want to take the big bite and just try to get the whole thing in? One word of warning, if you do decide, well, actually, I think that the um, either the city or the landowners have to, to I don't want to say instigate, but start off with a zoning request. So I'm not sure that you as a commission could come and do that, but certainly we would want to talk with the planning department. They do, uh, law, state law would require Oh, on a zone change, you always have to notify all the landowners um, and get their input. Doesn't mean if they say no that you won't get the change. It's just that that's the law. Uh, trying to think of what else. The the so much of what that committee was discussing is now in your laps, which I think is really wonderful. Um, but just so you know, it's not you're not trying to do something brand new. Right. I remember no. that they had been designated. Mm -hmm. I had brought that up at one of the meetings. <coughs> and we were trying to find out exactly what were the boundaries. Yeah. yeah. And um, I had hoped to bring them out, but they crazily put it like all in red. No. Um, <laughs> trying to think <laughs> if there's, if anyone else has any questions, please ask. Otherwise, I'm going to go sit down. I did have some, a map though, I'm going to pass around for you, which is the map, not of us, but a map of all the various, um, if you go online and go to the um, THC's Texas Arts and Plan, or TCA, mm -hmm. that the little, all the little dots are where the cities are that have them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very enlightening to see who does. Uh, there's a, several videos on the TCA website. One of them is, and, and I have it keyed up if you want to see it, it's about 20 minutes, and it's, are you ready? It's <laughs> 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 Uh, um, are you ready to apply for, you know, the cultural district? The cultural district? I, I have some information here that you might want to peruse before we even do anything. Um, and this is on the uh, the cultural districts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. And so it's it's very, you know that they even have the, you know, thinking of you with your poetry slam or what right. do you call it? Mm -hmm. That's even included in, in, right. in some of this information here. But I don't know that it, I mean, I think it's something that that is worth a while to look into. Yeah. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to go ahead and if you were going to pass that around. This is actually application mm -hmm. for the designation, and I think that would be relevant to, Good. to get an idea. You probably see well, that. Well, I'm, I'm willing to okay. watch the video. I would love to watch the video. If everybody wants yeah, to watch yeah, the absolutely. video. Absolutely. Yeah. Pick up your sandwich. And <laughs> <laughs> get your popcorn out. <laughs> So we have a lot of homework, I'm excited. Uh -huh. <laughs> Can I get you something? Today we're going to discuss the cultural districts in Texas and when it's the most appropriate time to apply for cultural district designation. I'm uh, Jim Bob McMillan, and I'm the Deputy Director here at TCA, and I manage the Cultural Districts Program. So we're going to start with our very basic information about what the Cultural District is. And um, as you read on the screen, you see that it's a, basically it's a recognized, labeled, mixed-use area of the community in which there exists a high concentration of arts and cultural facilities, individual artists, and events that are promoted to attract cultural tourists. So uh, what do we mean by recognize? That means that the community needs to recognize it, either the city government or the county government or uh, citizens or all of these need to recognize that this is a cultural district. And when we talk about mixed use, what we're talking about there is that there's a variety of businesses, organizations, hopefully some housing and maybe some parks, so that there's a variety of ways that the, the area can be used. Um, when we say high concentration of arts and cultural facilities, it's important that there's more than one uh, arts organization or cultural uh, attraction in this area. There needs to be a concentration of them, and it's very important, uh, if you don't have those, it might not be the time to uh, declare a cultural district. And finally, what is, why is it important that we have promotion in the definition? The reason is that this, these cultural districts are, at their most basic, a, a marketing tool for communities to attract visitors. And uh, if you don't talk to them and sell the district, then they won't come. So who should apply for cultural districts? Communities that have an existing concentration of parks and cultural assets that are clustered in one walkable area of the city that they want to promote to visitors. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what walkable means in this uh, later on in the webinar. But if you don't have an area like this and you're thinking that you want to build one, you need to wait until it's done to come and ask TCA for designation as a cultural district. So what are the, what are the important dates? There are two significant dates that you need to be aware of. If you're ready to apply for cultural districts, the uh, letter to intent to apply is due on January 30th. The deadline for the full application is then due on June the 15th. So in order to apply, you have to have filed a letter of intent. And um, any community that files this letter or cultural district is eligible to go ahead and submit their application on June the 15th. There's no, you don't have to wait for an okay from PCA. The, I will look at those letters of intent and be in touch with all of the applicants and answer any questions and perhaps schedule some visits to those communities. But there is, um, you don't have to wait until I say go before you can start preparing your application. And these deadlines occur every year. So where are the cultural districts in Texas? Where have they been designated? Well, they are in 28 different locations around the state. 
And uh, as you can see, this compare all of the communities that have cultural districts. You'll notice that Houston has five districts and San Antonio has two districts. Um, they run the gamut from very small, with Wimberley really having the smallest population of only 2,582, 2, and Houston with a population of 2,239, uh, with five cultural districts. So they're, they're across the state and far and wide. So when do you know that you're ready to apply for a cultural district designation? Are there some questions you can answer? And yes, there are. We're going to go over those right away. <clears throat> uh, you need to have political support for the cultural district. This means that you need to be have visited with your elected leadership. Perhaps if you have a city manager, you need to discuss the possibility with them. All of the people in your community that are the uh, important decision makers need to be aware of your plans to apply for the designation for your cultural district. You need to have conducted some planning, and that planning effort needs to reflect the diversity of your community, and that means ethnically, uh, age-wise, um, all the segments of the community. If you have different types of communities in your city, then they need to all be uh, a part of this planning effort. You need to know or have a good idea where the funds are going to come for, from to pay for your district. Uh, the promotion and the activities. So that's another important thing. Uh, you need to have marketing and promotion strategies. So if you're going to try to bring people to your community, you need to have some target target audiences in mind. Um, if you want to try to bring people from the next town over, that's fine. A good rule of thumb about bringing people to your city and having them count as cultural tourists is they need to come from 50 miles or more away from your community. And the, the next point is that you need to think about whether or not there's strong support from the arts and cultural leaders. Are they aware that uh, this is going on? That's important for them to be on board. Uh, you need to have an agency, uh, hopefully an arts agency, that has the staff and the management capacity to act as the administrative and fiscal agent for the cultural district. This is even more important now that TCA has dollars available for project funds for these cultural districts. You need to have access to research and planning. This is for the, the planning efforts that you need to do for the district, as well as when you come across new ideas and new efforts you need to be able to plan them out and if you have a university or if you have a city planning department that can help you flesh out those plans, that would be great for you. And you need to answer the question about of why we need a cultural district. Be ready to answer that question because it will come up. So let's start at the very bottom and talk a little bit more about what cultural tourism is. It's uh, the travel industry's um, term of describing travel and visitation activities that are directed toward arts and heritage, recreation, and natural resources. So you can think about that. That's those type of visitors to your community. It's not a new phenomenon. It's been going on for years, and tech people have been coming to Texas for decades to see and experience uh, these type of things. But it's a good way of connecting visitors to <coughs> authentic cultural experiences. That means that you can bring people to your community and you can um, perhaps have an artist create their works with them in close proximity. You can maybe take them backstage if there's a performance. You might be able to offer them some experiences that they cannot get in other places. One of the things that you need to know is that these multicultural and multi-generational visitors, uh, they make their choices about where they're going to go according to the performances, the artistic act activity, perhaps the architecture and the historical offerings. So it's important that if you can touch uh, and get into their knowledge, they'll probably make a decision to come and see you. And one good thing we have going for us is in our state, in Texas, we have many great cultural destinations. So what are the five types of cultural districts? Well, the first one is cultural compounds. And these are probably 
the oldest districts. These are where areas of a community where you have uh, things like major museums yeah. or large performance halls or auditoriums. You might have uh, some schools, some libraries or colleges, planetariums and zoos. These are the type of things that are in these cultural compounds. Some examples of these would be the Fort Worth Cultural District, Fair Park in Dallas, and Brownville, Brownsville's Mini Cultural District. The second type is the arts institution focus. Uh, these are places where concert halls and uh, playhouses and libraries and museums are clustered together. And there may be several smaller arts or entertainment facilities such as nightclubs and cinemas that are often a part of these districts. Uh, they're located sometimes and often close to the downtown business districts and some examples of these include the uh, Dallas Arts District, the Houston Museum District, and the Houston Theater District. Um, the arts and entertainment focus um, districts, they have popular <coughs> attractions at the center of their uh, districts. And they usually are aimed at a younger audience. Um, and they tend to have more of a bohemian feel to them. Uh, they don't have as many of the major arts institutions and some examples of those might be the Deep Ellum area in Dallas, or Austin 6th Street, or McAllen's 17th Street area. Uh, and the downtown focus, um, this is a district that encompasses most of the downtown area, including the Central Business District. Some examples of those include the Clifton Cultural Arts District, the Downtown Bryan Cultural District, and the Downtown El Paso Cultural District. And finally, the focus on arts production. These are a little bit different in that the um, focus of these districts is more on uh, the presentation of, the, it's less on the presentation of the arts and more on the arts production or arts education. And some of the examples of some of these are uh, Houston's Midtown Arts and Entertainment District, the Greater East End in Houston, and Houston's Washington Avenue Arts District. I would advise that if you haven't visited a cultural district, you might want to uh, take a time to go and visit one before you, or as a part of your planning for the cultural district designation. So at the very basic, and the uh, very base of all of the work you have to do in planning a district is setting up cultural district boundaries. How do you do that? Well, you need to select an area of your community that is contiguous and that's walkable. It needs to be close enough together that people can either walk, walk or uh, ride a bicycle or easily navigate um, in order for it to work whole together and to work well. It needs to include lots of arts activity and things for uh, visitors to do as well as the citizens of the community. And these activities need to be occurring on a regular time schedule. Um, the city government and economic agencies should be aware of what's going on so that um, they can be cognizant of the fact that there is, uh, that the arts are contributing to the livability and the economic development of the city. I think that will be a, a selling point when you're working with those decision makers. And the uh, district needs to be actively involved in uh, engaged in promotion. So if you have an area of the city that's too large, then it's difficult to promote that and for people to find that district and all the corners of that district. So keep that in mind, why you want to keep it relatively lim limited. What I do tell, advise uh, or cities that are putting together a cultural district is that once you get visitors to your district, then you can direct them to the other cultural amenities that are in the area. You don't have to have everything in your district. Also be aware that you should include restaurants and other venues, business or anything like that, um, any kind of tourist attraction, hotels and any other amenities in your marketing efforts. And these should be a partner and a part of the cultural district. So, what are we talking about when we talk about walkability? And the way it's formally defined as the built environment, the buildings and the things that are made by man, um, that it's, it's friendly and that it's 
good for people that live there, that shop or visit, and it encourages people to spend time in these areas. So some characteristics that you want to think about for the walkability is that you have sort of a natural center to your district, and that means that there might be a, a main street or a public square that activity can <coughs> focus around. There needs to be enough people in this area for business to take place and for activity to flourish. Um, so if you have it and it's sort of away from the community and it's, they have to travel to get there, then there may not be enough people for you to get a foothold for the uh, district to grow. It would be good if you have uh, mixed income and mixed use uh, of these of this area. So that means that you need to have some areas that and some individuals that perhaps are wealthier or have a higher income and also you don't want to neglect those that have a lower income. It's uh, all, you need to have a variety of things that can go on that they can uh, take advantage of when they use the cultural district. And it would, it's very um, advantageous to have affordable housing nearby your cultural district. The parks and public spaces are important for attracting people to, to gather and to play, to experience the arts. So it's really a, a, a good thing and, and brings points to your cause if you have parks and public spaces in your cultural district. These need to be designed for um, public use and pedestrian use. Uh, the buildings would be, would be good if they're um, close to the street and the parking areas are further away, perhaps at the back. Uh, they need to be close to schools and workplaces, and that will help, particularly if you have uh, residential areas within the cultural district. That will make people think that it's an attractive place to live and to work. And the streets need to be designed for uh, bicyclists, for pedestrians, and for public transport. All of those uh, areas are important for, um, for cultural districts to be successful. So when you're putting the application together, I think it's very important for you to realize that you have to satisfy some criteria that are set forth in the CCA guidelines. And there are three different areas that you need to be thinking about. The first is you need to demonstrate high artistic quality. And so the design elements of the cultural district, the architecture that's there, if you have some fine artists who have their studio space there, a variety of types of artists, those are the types of things that you could talk about in the application that lets the evaluators know that the artistic quality is important and that you've thought about it and that you're showcasing it and featuring it prominently. There needs to be capability for you to carry off this plan. So here we're talking about your organizational capability, which means you have staff or volunteers that can carry out the work that are, is needed and necessary for a district to be successful. Have you done some planning? Do you have the ability to measure its success and uh, implement your plans um, in the district. And finally, are you having a strong impact in the communities? Are you uh, contributing to the economic impact uh, of this area of the city? Um, are you bringing visitors from outside so they can spend their dollars in your community? Those are the type of things that the evaluators are going to be looking for when they are evaluating these three criteria points. Because when they look at these applications, they assign point values to your application in each of these areas. And now let's move on and talk a little bit about who you should pull together to develop the district. The sort of core group of stakeholders that are important for you to utilize are arts organizations, artists, and arts agencies, governmental agencies, if you have a developer or a development authority that's doing planning in the, in the city and the area particularly that you are involved with, and business associations like Chamber of Commerce or Downtown Business Association, any of those are important for you to be involved, to be involved in the planning of this cultural district. Others that you may want to include and would be quite important in many communities are the Chambers of Commerce, mentioned in Business Bureau, 
anytime it's land developers, it's good to have banks represented represented on the planning committee. Your school district or districts, uh, universities, any foundations that might um, have some insight and, and hopefully some funding, and other nonprofits. There may be other social service uh, nonprofits or uh, other groups that you think would be important and have an impact in this particular community. So out of this planning, you need to come up with an organizational structure for the cultural district. And you need to articulate it in some sort of a diagram similar to the one that I'm showing you on the screen right now. Uh, this one shows the community at the top, and then the steering committee that's below that, and then the manager of the district or the executive director, and then the committees, the variety of committees that are doing the work of the cultural district. So in this one, there is the organizational committee, the marketing committee, the cultural resources committee, the design committee, and the business development committee, and then below that are events. So it's up to you on how you structure this, but I have found in my experience that this is sort of a delicate area for you to, to uh, put together but it is very important because as you move forward and you start applying for grants and bringing resources to your cultural district, then you'll need to have this organizational structure that helps you make the decisions and that can create policies to govern what you do in your cultural district. So don't, uh, don't forget this step and you'll need something like this when you put the application together. So, once you get to the point of doing some planning and you feel that you're ready to um, move forward and put your application together, then we want to talk a little bit now about what you should put into your letter of intent. Those letters of intent are due on January the 30th, and they need to include about one page, 400 words or thereabouts, that talks about the history and the development of the district. Kind of give some background and some context. And then you need to talk about, in another page, the location of the cultural district, what's included, and perhaps give the boundaries and uh, give an overall description and a list of scheduled events. You can, in addition to that description, you can put a map if you have it available. And then you have about a half a page to articulate your major goals for the district and then you have another half a page to talk about marketing and promotion plans and what you're, how you're going to bring people and visitors uh, to the district and finally you have about a half a page to talk about your uh, the overview of the district's management structure and who is going to do what if you're partnering with the Main Street program if you have the Chamber of Commerce or the Conventionist Visitors Bureau involved or if you have a, a tax increment district that's going to be involved, then those need to be described and given um, some, some weight in the description here. So this is important uh, for you to put together and to think about, and this is what you'll need when you write the letter uh, of intent. This will give you about a five page document. We don't want it to be 25 pages. This is a concise description of the cultural district and your plans for it. So that's sort of our brief orientation of what the program is and what the expectations are. And we're going to be putting together uh, three other webinars that will be available in the near future. The first one is called Planning for a Cultural District, and it talks about how you do the planning and the, particularly the cultural planning for a cultural district. The second webinar is putting together the cultural district designation application and finally after you have um, this or part of your planning should be uh, developing a brand and marketing and promoting the cultural district which is number three that one should be aimed at those that are interested in building a cultural district but also those that have a cultural district finally i'll say that uh, you can Send your questions to me. I'll be glad to get back to them. You can either telephone me or you can email me and I'll respond to you. And if you would like a copy of the slides here in this presentation, then I'll be glad to email those to you. 
Um, I look forward to hearing from you, and uh, thank you for your attention. Very 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 interesting, but I think we are not quite there yet. <laughs> but that gives us something to look forward to. But we are a step ahead, one step ahead, right? Because right. we've got the the zoning, right? And that's important to to um, well, maybe think about it. That's, uh, even in a small scale, it doesn't have to be a yes, right. yes. no. not big. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a lot of requirements, uh, which I think are interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also fear us. Yeah. I saw a building there that looked like the Plaza Theater. It did, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank, yeah. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Okay, so any discussion on that or comments? Or it was very informative. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still thinking about the contest and the, you know, we could get some money for people that, that, that would be a very good start for us, I think. But mm -hmm. what? Well, that's what I think we are saying. Plan in the planning for yeah. the, yeah. we, we want to go home and, and do our <coughs> homework and start putting our, and I think maybe, you know, there's no reason why we all can't be messaging each other or texting each other or keeping in communication. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, make a group maybe. Yeah, like a group. I mean I know we're in a group email, um, but my phone is available to anybody who wants mm -hmm. it if we want to have a group text message or... Um, the other thing also, I know it's not here, but Gabriel did say he wasn't going to be able to be with us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we want to think about that. Maybe we need another member. Mm -hmm. Um, to replace him. Who was he representing? Vilma. Um, so I don't know if she has somebody in mind. Mm -hmm. Nelly Vilma? Yeah. Nelly, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I don't know if, he, if he's informed her. I'm assuming that he has. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she, it would be a if he has. He has, okay. Okay, so she might have somebody mm -hmm. already in mind. Okay. So I guess we'll find that out. I think maybe if we all bring a uh, like uh, ideas to the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Our own, like say, for instance, you know, you talk expertise. about expertise. Yes, expertise <laughs> yes. with because uh, under music itself, it's it's, it's quite a big umbrella. It's oh big. yeah. You know, yeah. The original composition yeah. to do a, a, a jingle yeah. for the city, or right. Right. I mean, there's just oh. so the the options are just oh I know. Yeah. 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 So I think if so we bring all that to the table, yeah. Just so just maybe because you guys are the musicians, you know, mm -hmm. see what you think would be feasible because there are there are. I mean, I don't know if Tammy is doing competitions. Uh, no, but it's on music. my radar. The Laredo Philharmonic yeah. Orchestra used to have a piano competition that they haven't yeah. done in quite a while. Okay. They still have a concerto well, competition. They've got a concerto oh, competition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, that's coming up. Okay. Um, so and then how do you publicize this? Like, just by paper, just a newspaper? I mean, if it's coming from the commission, I mean, we can certainly get the city's PIO to work on right. it. Right, exactly. Press yeah. release and, yeah. and, yeah. Yeah. and all that. Yeah. Right. You have that resource. And then, right. depending on what it is, obviously, like, if it was music, you all have connections to Texas yeah. musicians <laughs> and schools yeah. and everything yeah. all over. Yeah. If it's the arts community, there's arts communities all over that you just get their, you know, call to artists or what, whatever, competition for this. So, so those resources obviously are out there, especially now with so much social media and, and um, the internet. I mean, it, everything's oh, yeah. available. So, yeah. so that really helps, too. They yeah, just had a mariachi mm -hmm. contest. Yes, yes, yeah. No, no, am I wrong? Yeah, a band did. on the 19th, what's today? The, it this past, I think it was yeah, a it was weekend, like a, they had a band. Sunday. A mariachi no, a, no, a band, a high school band. Like a band, uh, a band or something. Uh, cool. At one of the schools, yeah. I, I wanted it. to go because I love that. And, yes. and they had it a mariachi. It might have been the, what they have, a preliminary that they have before they go into the UIL competition, mm -hmm. which is our uh, Yeah, thing. I think yeah. they were coming from out of town. Yeah, that must have been beautiful. But I think several events like that. Uh, in front of us, we can group arts music right. here, mm -hmm. arts music over there, and then, and then form one one event 
Right. That has all of these. Uh, and you know, and, 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 and that's, that's, a, that's yeah. a very good idea. And then we could do an art series and, and mm -hmm. promote it, you know, and have a calendar for the arts and right. just have a series sure. of different things always going on, you know. Yes, so. and that's, yeah. see, and that was one of the things I said, your list of events that you have constantly going on. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it would be great to, I, I agree, to put together maybe one big event that we want to ask for funding for. Right. But then, then also different. think of what other small events that we could say, <coughs> this is what we want to do this month, this month, this month, this yeah. month. Little small events that maybe one is music, one is dance, one is uh, arts, one is uh, educational, Actually, educational arts for, mm -hmm. for children. The sewing yeah. also, uh, mm -hmm. people that want to be designers. Right. They just had one in... Uh, let me, see, let me tell you, it wasn't even, it wasn't in Hollywood, and it was some place like in Michigan or something, they had a, that they have like a contest on, on the best sewing. Well, contest. there's a, a facet of know, art that fashion. is uh, fabric art that also encompasses <coughs> stitching, sewing, yes. making fabric, exactly. or making clothing. Fabric art is a very interesting, and I think they have, they have, um, exhibits and a lot of artists who live in uh, I want to say around the hunt area and um, the hill country yeah. they do have that um, as a matter of fact uh, my mind went blank for a minute mm -hmm. what's her name Oscar Pena's mother um, Mickey Mickey uh. Mickey uh, Rodriguez. Mickey Rodriguez she's uh, now doing fabric art She's, she's not painting now, she's doing fabric art, and she lives in San Antonio, and she's exhibiting her work in those places. So I know fabric art is another thing, so that's also yeah. uh, a lot of <coughs> interesting stuff. So, like, I saw one at the Center for the Arts also that was very interesting, there was only two pieces. Oh, it was Mallory. Mallory. The uh, one that had the big horse and had everything that you throw away was, it was done on, Oh, oh, that's the. the did you see that? that or that's not? Ponchos. That's the VNT studio. Oh, the horseshoe. The horseshoe. It's uh, made out of horse yeah. shoes and stuff. It has yeah. shoe horse. Yes, yes. Yeah. exactly like yeah. that. It's, 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 it, the, the project was uh, from VNT, a student, and it was to use recyclable materials. And recyclable. Recycle. Yes. Now that that's I, another I love thing. That's that. a great idea. That's too. a great. So so yeah, the, so we should put on our thinking caps, and mm -hmm. I think for our next meeting. Um, I don't know, we all should come up with individual ideas uh, in, in what we think would be good. And uh, like he's saying, from our area of expertise or whatever. And that way we can sort of start hammering out what we actually want to request from the city to put on maybe in a big, <coughs> a big event and then have yeah. continuous events going on. I think we really need I to start. If all of us come with an idea, maybe That'd we could great. put them into a series. Yes, exactly. And, and like maybe a month by month thing that we have different things going on and we find ways to fund it. Um, maybe it's always going to be through the <laughs> discretionary funds or what the city wants to allot us. I don't know. Um, from mm -hmm. work on it. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and then tie it at the same time with some uh, education for the kids. Yes. There, there are these wonderful True. traveling art shows that we could also think about bringing in. Like they have one on Van Gogh, and they bring it in and they set up panels, oh, and yeah. it's a walking oh, yeah. experience. Yeah. And then the te the kids have to get bused to wherever that is or taken there, and they walk through it. It's all about this artist, and it they they actually exist, and you can you pay for them to come in and set up in, in a space in your community. It's a, it's a the tra traveling art. I used yes. to. I, I used to so the those students are exposed yeah. to, to something very visual and, and big and impactful. So yeah, there's things it's like that nice. also. Yeah. I think we have a lot that we can. Even no, like poetry is hey, very have 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 a flamenco contest. Flamenco does. But well, wait, let me tell you. I was just going to mention that. Mm -hmm. In the radio we have Everybody thinks of dancing one way or the other. Mm -hmm. it, people are, sometimes they love it, but it gets to be overwhelming. There's too much. It, ballet, too much. The recitals, too much. You, I'm talking about, you, I mean, it, you know, it, it, it gets a little to where I, I already saw it. The folkloricos, 
I already saw it again. But see, that's part of our culture. It's no, no, of course, us. yes. It's not me. Hey, I taught it. I mean, I know. Right. But what I'm saying is, attract people mm -hmm. and have them make a competition. But you'll get a lot of people from San Antonio. But anyway. Exactly, because what did he say? That if you're putting on an arts anything, you need to be drawing from people 50 miles, miles to at least yeah. 50 yeah. miles yeah. away. Yeah. So it's not to say yeah. that we're doing this just for, for the locals. Yeah. And it's promoting tourism and getting people from other places to come mm -hmm. in and rent mm -hmm. hotel rooms and spend in restaurants yeah. and participate and bring mm -hmm. in tourism. That's also our mm -hmm. look what so. San Antonio does with a folk life festival. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yeah. That's the reason why there's a need for promotion and for advertising. Exactly. Yes. And Doing and they and what they do is they highlight all the different cultures. Not mm -hmm. Laredo, man. We have <laughs> we have everything. Every, 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 yeah. So yeah, so we these do. are these are good ideas. I think this mm -hmm. was a really great meeting that we had today with lots of good input. I think we're excited. That's I'm very excited. Good. Yes. At least we're we're looking forward um, to doing something. So I guess mm -hmm. is there any other comments? Do we have anything else mm -hmm. to discuss on this topic? No. We're good? We're excited? We're excited. Have lots of homework? Okay. Um, so we need to schedule our next meeting. For um, our agenda for next time. Do, do we keep it in, in, on Thursdays? Um, yeah, I don't know. You all, you all decide. I don't know if Joe has some issue with that or if he... Yeah, no, I think it was just this month. It was just this month. It was just this month, I think. Um, no, he says... Oh, know. that's right. The, it's the uh, Alzheimer's like every Wednesday. Right. Yeah, the Wednesday. Wednesday. So we can't oh, do it. Oh, where are we going to meet then? At the, at the library? Hopefully it'll be at the library. Oh. Yeah. And we got everything. I know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're <laughs> happy. <laughs> so yeah. so yeah. then yeah. it would be what? September the 20th? From our own. <laughs> September 20th. Okay. Is that, is that good for everybody? 5.30 so good. good. Yeah. And hopefully mm -hmm. in the library. Yeah. 5.30. <laughs> and that's on what day is that? It's a Thursday. Thursday, September 20th. 20. Now is that when Joe has a conflict on Thursdays? No, no I think no, it's Wednesday. 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 Ah, Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday. Okay, so Thursday is fine. I think the mess of his schedule for it. I know. <coughs> that you said 20th, right? Okay. September. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you, you're saying it will be at the library? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything is set up already. Just didn't get set up in time for, for this meeting to be posted. Okay. Very good. Very productive. Okay, yeah. so. Um, we got it, excited after that have, film. No, um, we still need to approve the absences of last of July's meeting. Okay, so it which was, were myself, who else was absent? Uh, uh, Alfonso, Gabriel, and, and his, uh, Gutierrez Garcia. Okay, Garcia. Poncho, who called you and Yolanda. did you know that they were not coming? <laughs> Oh, me. Okay, who, yes. who did not call you at Oh, Mr. Santos. I didn't, I didn't hear from him. And you didn't hear from him this This time. is for yeah. this meeting. And oh, last meeting. Oh, last meeting. Last meeting. Oh, last meeting. Okay, last so what did we say? Meeting. There were three absences or an uh, In July, or we had Let me see, I have one, like two, three, four absences in, in July. Yes. Right. So, so we need to do you I left messages last week. Last month. meeting. Last meeting. So uh, you need to vote for the July absences and then for the absences for August, which is this meeting. Okay, May so I make a suggestion because this is, I, I know what's going to happen. We need everybody's input here all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say that if we're going to excuse somebody, that yeah. the least they can do is call and say, you know, I won't be there. Mm -hmm. But when you send messages and reminders and they don't even show up, they don't even call. I don't think we should automatically excuse them. Last month I got here and it was over. Because I got, <laughs> I, I, got I, 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 I said, I'm, I'm running late on yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah, but you I was, was, yes, I was way late yes. and then I got no, the train. So by the time I got here, it was a train. So, yeah, well done, so well yeah, I had all yeah. the other yeah. We had a member that never once Shut up. Never once. Yeah, so up. that was that person we... Okay, but what I'm saying is that we should have a little responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that it shouldn't be automatically that we excuse everybody. If you called or if you send an email, sorry, something came up, I, fine, we'll excuse that. And that's what, uh, in our library board, that's what we 
the, the board uh, ex expects. expects. Yeah. Uh, so if for some reason we never got a hold of them, they might table it and vote for it on uh, the next yeah. one. Yeah. But if we never got a reason. I okay, also so think if we want to really accomplish something here, if we want to do and make a difference in the city, uh, we're going to need that responsibility mm -hmm. from the right. members to give the constant, consistent input. So, did yeah. we did we excuse True. anybody from June? Was there people yeah, missing from June? I was no. I was did we vote on that? June, yes. Yes. Did we all vote on that the last time? Yes. Okay. yes we did. did we have a yes. meeting that uh, we didn't have enough people? Yeah, yeah. it was the quorum. The quorum. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that, yeah. that uh, yeah. when you had a quorum, you voted to excuse yeah. them. Okay. Fine. So and for so for July is. Ms. Gutierrez Garcia, Gabriel, Al Alfonso Santos, and Ms. Rodriguez. Right. Now, I let you know it was late and it right. turned out I didn't <coughs> get here. I'm mm. sure did Yola Yolanda said she could make it. Uh, Gabriel said he couldn't make it. I remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But I don't know about Poncho. No. He didn't say? Okay. No, he didn't. Okay. No. So, so three yeah. out of four? Okay. We need a motion. And a <laughs> <laughs> we need a motion. I move that we excuse uh, those members that were absent that notified, not yeah. those that were Do I hear a second? a second? A second. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we excuse the members who did notify and those who did that not don't you. get excused. <laughs> <laughs> and then you give them what? Three, 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 three times. And two three. times. No, three. 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 Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And now for, for today's meeting, um, it's Mr. Alfonso Santos the, and Mr. Zinega, but uh, Mr. Zinega. Joe. He and yeah, he, Gabriel and Joe said they couldn't be here. Well, yeah. and um, Gabby Poncho. is no longer right now. Mm -hmm. But Boncho, I guess, did not let so us know. Do we need to have a motion again for today? Yes. Okay. For Can I hear a motion for today's absences? I move yeah. that we excuse those that called in and not excuse those that did not. I second that. All right, that motion has been moved and seconded. So all those in favor? Uh, On the aye. last two aye. motions. Oh, aye. 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 Okay. aye. Okay, so both of those motions pass. Okay. All right, any other business we need to get to? We have the date for our next meeting. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> 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 Adjourn? Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All right. We're on. We're on. All those in favor, aye. 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 aye.